Hello everyone, welcome to BioTales. Today we are going to talk about a disease that is called tularemia. Tularemia is a disease that infects animals as well as humans and it is also known as rabbit fever. So let's see what are the causes of this disease. The disease is caused by a small rod-shaped non-motile bacterium called Francisella tularensis. The bacterium is typically spread through insect bites like ticks and mosquitoes, handling infected animals like rabbits, hares, consuming contaminated food or water, inhalation of contaminated dust or aerosols, direct contact with infected tissues or body fluids. People who work with infected animals or in environments where the bacterium is common, like hunters, agriculture workers, are at a high risk of exposure to tularemia. So let's see what are the symptoms of this disease. The symptoms of tularemia can vary depending on how the bacterium entered the body, but common symptoms include fever, chills, fatigue, muscle itches, headache, dry cough, skin ulcers or swelling at the site of infection, swollen lymph nodes, conjunctivitis, pneumonia. Symptoms can appear anywhere from 1 to 14 days after exposure to the bacterium and can range from mild to severe. If left untreated, tularemia can be serious and potentially fatal, so prompt diagnosis and treatment are important. Now let's talk about its pathogenesis. The pathogenesis of tularemia involves the infection and replication of bacterium Francisella tularensis in the host organism. Here is a general overview of the process. First step is initial infection. The bacterium can enter the body through various routes such as insect bites, handling infected animals, inhalation of contaminated dust or aerosols, or direct contact with infected tissues or body fluids. The second step is bacterial replication. Once inside the host, the bacterium replicate and spread to nearby tissues and organs, causing inflammation and tissue damage. Third step is immune response. In response to the infection, the host immune system activates and produces various cytokines and immune cells to fight the bacterium. The fourth step is tissue damage and symptoms. As the bacterium continues to replicate and spread, it causes tissue damage and the release of toxins leading to symptoms of tularemia. And at the end, there are complications. In severe cases, the bacterium can spread to the bloodstream and cause a systemic infection leading to sepsis and potentially fatal complications. It is important to note that the course of tularemia can vary depending on the route of infection, the virulence of the strain, and the host immune response. Early diagnosis and treatment with antibiotic can help to minimize the severity of disease and improve the outcome. Let's see how tularemia can be diagnosed. Diagnosis of tularemia is typically based on a combination of patient symptoms, medical history, and laboratory tests. There are some methods that can be used to diagnose tularemia. Physical examination. The doctor will examine the patient and look for signs of infection such as skin ulcers, swollen lymph nodes, or conjunctivitis. Medical history. The doctor will ask the patient about their recent activities and any potential exposure to infected animals or contaminated environments. Blood test. Blood test can be used to detect the presence of bacterium or antibodies against it or to identify any changes in the body's normal functioning that may indicate infection. Cultures. Culturing the bacterium from a sample of infected tissue, for example, skin ulcers, sputum, can confirm the diagnosis of tularemia. Serological test. Serological tests such as enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, that is also called ELISA, can detect antibodies against the bacterium in the patient's blood. Imaging test. Imaging tests such as x-rays or computer tomography scans, which is also called CT scans, can be used to look for signs of infection in the lungs or other organs. Now let's see how tularemia can be treated. Tularemia can be treated with antibiotics and early diagnosis and treatment can lead to a full recovery. The specific type of antibiotics and length of treatment depend on the severity of the disease and the specific strain of bacterium causing the infection. Some commonly used antibiotics are streptomycin, gentamicin, tetracycline, chloramphenicol, fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin. In severe cases of tularemia, hospitalization may be necessary to receive intravenous antibiotics and supportive care. In addition to antibiotics, supportive measures such as rest, 
Hydration and pain management may also be recommended. It is important to complete the full course of antibiotics even if you start feeling better as this can help to prevent the development of antibiotic resistant strain of the bacterium and ensure that the infection is fully treated. If tularemia is not treated, it can lead to serious and potentially fatal complications. So now we see that how tularemia can be prevented. Preventing tularemia involves avoiding exposure to the bacterium Francisella tularensis and taking measures to reduce the risk of infection. Here are some steps that can help to prevent tularemia. Avoid handling or eating wild animals, especially rabbits and hares. Use insect repellent and take steps to avoid tick and mosquito bites, especially when in areas where tularemia is common. Wear gloves and other protective clothing when handling dead animals or when performing activities that may generate dust or aerosols, like mowing lawns, cutting woods. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water after handling animal or after being in areas where the bacterium is present. Cook meat thoroughly before eating to kill any bacteria that may be present. Get prompt medical attention if you suspect you have been exposed to tularemia or if you develop symptoms of the disease. By following these precautions, you can reduce your risk of exposure to the bacterium and lower the chances of getting tularemia. It is also important to stay informed about the disease, especially if you live in an area where tularemia is common, to be aware of any change or updates to the recommendation for prevention. So that was all about tularemia. If you like our video, please subscribe to the channel and click on bell icon for further notification. Thank you.